Okay, hi everyone. This is Kelly Boone from Tech and Learning. I want to thank everyone for attending today's summit. Again, uh, this summit is held both today and tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern. A uh, special thank you to our sponsors, Guide, uh, Guide K12, now Forecast 5 Analytics, Media Site, Prezi, and Nuvera. Uh, new Riva. Uh, and uh, I'd also like to uh, remind everyone to go ahead and log into the conference hub if you haven't already. Um, you can use the links that were sent to you in your com uh, confirmation email. Once you're logged in there, you can visit our sponsor booths and you can Zoom meet with them. Uh, there are buttons hidden all over the website to enter the passport to prizes. Every time you find one, uh, you will get one entry into the passport to prizes. However, if you Zoom chat with any of our sponsors, you will get 20 entries into the passport to prizes. So we will um, announce those winners at the end of the conference. Um, also in the conference hub, you can see your personalized agenda. If you want to ch change any of the sessions you're registered for, there's a button to modify your registration, and then that will populate your My Agenda page with your new links. Um, you can also network with today's attendees. There's a chat box as well as um, the registrant directory, so you can book one-to-one -one meetings. And then also if you check out the resources section of the event hub, any presentations from today, along with any resources that have been given out by today's speakers, everything will be in that section uh, in real time. So before we begin, just a, cover, a couple housekeeping items. If you have any questions for the presenters during the session, please submit them through the Zoom chat feature. Um, we'll capture all those questions and we'll make sure we can get as many of those answered as possible. Um, again, today's slides will be in the resources section of the conference hub. And then last but not least, be sure to use the conference hashtag TLTechLive in any of your social media posts. So I'm going to go ahead now and pass it over to today's moderator, Lisa Nielsen. Thank you so much. Um, and Jackie, if you could please share your screen and pull up our slide deck, I will get us going. Um, and I want to thank all the participants who are here today. I see we have several people from the New York State Department of Education, so shout out to them and the people from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like, you can introduce yourself in the chat and share where you're from. Um, I will tell you this is not a sit and get session, and it's not a session where you're just going to be hearing from me and the other presenters. This is a super interactive session. So. Um, I know many of you on here are great discussers, so I think um, we're going to have a really good time. And uh, I'll introduce each of us, so if you can go to the next slide, Jackie. I am Lisa Nielsen. I uh, currently serve as the Senior Director of Digital Literacy and Inclusion at the New York City Department of Education. And I've been at the Department of Education since the 90s in all kinds of roles, from educator to where I am now. Um, and also librarian, and speaking of librarians, our other host uh, came to us in that capacity, and I'll go ahead and let Laura introduce herself. Hey folks, my name is Laura Ogando. I am currently the program manager for the Office of Digital Literacy and Inclusion with DIIT at the New York City Department of Education. Um, just like Lisa, I've been with the DOE now for a number of years, in fact, coming up on 10 uh, in various capacities as a librarian, most recently before this gig, but also as a special educator. Uh, I worked in a self-contained classroom for a number of years. I taught ICT. Uh, so I'm super stoked to be here today to talk to you all about digital citizenship and how we can do this work in a very practical way. Uh, and Jackie, over to you. Hi everyone, I'm Jackie Batanio. I work for the New York City Department of Education as well. I am an EdTech Borough Instructional Lead um, in Staten Island, which is District 31. I am an administrator for the about 71 schools that we have, and we are a uh, 3K to 12 district. I also have the pleasure of working with Lisa and Laura on other projects um, and some citywide initiatives. So uh, I have a really great job. I was an educator in a building for 10 years, technology coach there. Um, and for the past five, I've been at this level. And it's been a wonderful experience because we've gotten to do a lot around digital citizenship and um, happy to bring it to the masses and have this discussion today. Great. And we'll turn it over to Laura to do a little housekeeping. And I know Kelly hit on some of these things, but 
just to reiterate, Laura, if you'd like to share some housekeeping tips. Absolutely. So again, welcome to all of you. We're so excited that you're here virtually. Uh, so that we can make the most of this session, a couple of things. Uh, we are going to ask that you keep your mic muted for most of the session, but please, please, please utilize the chat. As Lisa said, this is not just us talking at you. We want to create a dialogue. Um, there will be times where we'll actually prompt you and uh, we ask that you use the raise hand feature. One of us will then call on you and then you can definitely unmute your mic. Uh, but we do want this to be a dialogue. Uh, we're all in the chat, so if there's something whilst we're presenting that you know you feel is burning, you got to get it out there, please put it in the chat. We are all in there. And like I said, this is about a dialogue. This is not one-sided. We want to hear from all of you. So uh, looking forward to making it a great session. Great. And Jackie, I think you're going to share a little bit about our Bitmoji classroom. Yes, yeah, so like everybody else, we've had Bitmoji craze. This is our Bitmoji classroom. We had fun. Uh, Lisa and Laura have this set for their sessions and they allowed me a spot on their couch. So I am very thankful for that. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's a really great way to kind of, you know, make things interactive, make them a little bit more fun. You'll see that we have the agenda here and the presentation linked along with uh, us, your hosts and our account, our Twitter accounts are accessible here. And if you want to join us over at the agenda. It's at the bottom, diit.nyc slash tldigsitnyc. So um, if you want to follow along, you can hop on to the agenda and follow along with the presentation. Great. Thank you. And um, I think you're going to do the norming guidelines, Jackie. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I am. So it's always fun, you know, presenting on Zoom and then also presenting your screen. So it's like this fine dance that I feel like I'm doing right now. So just <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> Yay. Um, so these are some of the norming guidelines for today's session. And again, these are um, the brainchild of Laura, Lisa, their team and the collective um, of NYC. And uh, we talk about, you know, what is the appropriate attire when we're in our meetings. So a lot of times we might just kind of pop out of bed and jump onto these calls. Today I actually got dressed up and put makeup on. Um, so it felt kind of spicy today. Um, again, how are we asking questions? We mentioned before, put in your questions in the chat and also raising your hand so that you know we have a chance to be able to get to everybody in sort of a systematic way, in a way that makes sense uh, with working online. Um, how are you giving feedback, muting and unmuting, which goes back to the questions, um, the protocols, because and we've had this happen before where you're kind of talking into the void or you feel like you're talking into the void like I feel like I am right now. <laughs> so how do we make sure we're not interrupting? Laura, do you want to jump in and say anything here? <laughs> Absolutely. And and this is definitely difficult. I when we're in session typically and we've been doing these trainings, I run through a whole host of housekeeping, but there's always someone that, you know, they're having difficulty. They'll say things like, I can't access the chat or I don't know where this is. Um, and we want to address this. This is We're doing this intentionally because this is actually part of digital citizenship, being able to norm and set the expectations. We want to do this not just with our students, but also with our teams, right? Um, and this was something that Lisa and I talked about to really make sure that our meetings are running as smoothly as possible. It's about, you know, this, this is how we set up what we do in person. So we need to kind of take that mindset and bring it with us into the virtual space. So, you know, these are definitely sometimes weird questions to say like, how do we do this? And, and yeah, what is the protocol for dress and makeup and whatnot? But honestly, it makes your team run so much smoother. It'll make your class run so much smoother. And these are all the things that tie right into the idea of the digital citizenship with remote teaching, really being reflective on the questions that they put forth. That comes up a lot for us um, is when you use your camera. So um, we like to have our cameras on because it's, a, it's an important thing to be able to see people's affect and see people's faces. You get a chance to kind of experience what the emotion is without physically being in a room with somebody. And have you been in those meetings where, you know, everybody's camera is off and all you see is either an icon or somebody's name? It's a little bit off-putting, you know? So it's, it's a really consider when you put your camera on. We're not saying you have to do it all the time, 
but you know, maybe when you're speaking, when it's your turn to talk or, you know, just think about the times that you might want to put your camera on if it's not on all the time. Um, and lastly, you know, recording your sessions. Obviously, we want to be respectful um, of when sessions are being recorded, uh, letting your participants know, and just kind of those type of basic, uh, basic courtesies, because you would do that in, a, in real life as well when it comes time to take photos of students or record a session that you're doing uh, in brick and mortar. So I'm going to move us away from our, our guidelines. Oops. So like I said before, and, and the way we set this up, we want to hear from you. So just to kind of get us started, uh, we want you to think about, you know, <laughs> these past few months and what challenges around digital citizenship were you seeing during remote learning that may continue to remain challenges as we move into learning. Uh, so definitely uh, feel free to drop your comment into the chat, or if you want to come off of your uh, mic, uh, raise your hand. That way we can call on you. So, um, Laura, I think that we'll let people, um, actually, let's drop that question into the chat as well and let people sure. respond to that. And I can that. do that unless you are on it. Oh, you can do it. <laughs> okay, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so that question is in the chat. So I think, I think we're going to let people start responding in the chat. And then I, I'll bring up um, just a news article um, that we wanted to share with you about why this matters now. And then we'll look at your chat responses and have a little discussion. And then we'll move into another activity. So if you can go to the next slide, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so this is an article that uh, came across the desks of all of us at the New York City Department of Education. And um, what it said is that a lot of teachers are uncomfortable using video conferencing and video conferencing live because they're afraid of what their students might do like take screenshots and make memes of them in social media. And so because of that, they just were not video conferencing whatsoever. Um, so another question we have for you is, and if you can just hit the arrow so we can get the animation, Jackie, um, the question that we have for you, is this something you've experienced where you work? So we have kind of two questions for you to think about right now. What challenges around digital citizenship were you seeing during remote learning that may remain challenges in the future is question one. And then the second question, which I'll also drop in the chat, is, is this something, the fear of using video cameras, uh, something that you experienced where you work? And um, I'm dropping that in the chat as well. And then I think we'll take a, a minute or so to see what some people are placing in the chat. And then if anyone would like to share their experience, please um, go ahead and raise your hand. If you're having a hard time raising your hand um, in Zoom, you could raise your physical hand as long as you're, um, and as I, long as you're showing. I think screen. Carl was raising his hand before. Oh, he's, I think he's got it up again. Carl, if you want to go ahead and unmute. Yeah. Hey, guys. Thanks so much, thanks so much for taking the Hi. time. Um, uh, just this, I kind of put this in the chat too, but this has been an interesting phenomenon working with kindergarten, first grade students uh, recently, and then seeing them at the end of the spring, a lot of times in their mind, when they're watching a video conference, they just think it's YouTube or Netflix. Like they, they almost forget that they're actually on camera. They think it's a video that they're just kind of sitting back and watching because you know, they're five and six years old. And so, um, one of the, we had a friend who had a, an experience where they were there, the parents were kind of in the room and they noticed that one of the little girls on the screen was actually like just picking up her shirt and you know, didn't really, wasn't thinking about it, right? It was just a little five <laughs> So I guess my question for you guys is how do you have those conversations, especially with the little ones who don't quite understand that kind of third wall, if you will, of the video camera? I mean, honestly, Carl, we've had participants, adult participants in our class a couple <laughs> times, like take their shirt off. This was a man I'm thinking of, but he took his shirt off and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> oh my God, he's like, shut that video down or something. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a really good question. And I think I, I'm going to say some ideas and then uh, Laura and Jackie jump in, please. But I think not that we necessarily had a chance this time around to be ready for that, 
but it might include for the young ones, especially having com video uh, conferencing with the parents and talking about some of the norms and ways to prepare their children. And for those who can't, uh, perhaps send them a recording of you just talking about it and also sending out guidelines. And of course, in a place like New York City, we'd have to write those in plain language so that they're easily translatable to our families as well. So that's just some quick ideas. Um, Laura and Jackie, if you have any ideas, and also if people watching, I'm, you're all very experienced in this as well, please share some thoughts in the chat. I definitely think partnering with parents and doing like a little kind of tutorial for them um, so that they can also support their children. I also think like you mentioned, Carl, that um, it's it's because they don't know, right? They're, they're just kind of oblivious. So they're watching YouTube and not realizing, you know, oh, I shouldn't lift my shirt up because you can see me. So being able to kind of point out on their device, like how do you know your camera's on? Um, for a lot of devices, there's usually, uh, I, I use a lot of Mac products, but usually there's like a little green dot next to the camera. And when the green dot's on, that signifies that my camera's on. So also kind of it, just like we would teach our students to read cues in other ways, like this is how you know this, this is how you know that. You have to show them on their technology, like, hey, this little light means your camera's on, right? This setting lets you know. Um, if you don't want to be on camera, this is how you turn it off. Or if you have one of those sliders, slide it over, right? Um, I, I think sometimes it's a simple fix, but just reminding them that, you know, you have to double check those things before you start doing stuff that might, uh, might be a little embarrassing. Eileen, you uh, mentioned something in the chat. I don't know if you want to come off mute and just kind of talk a little bit about that, the setting guidelines. Yeah, so what I found that not only did the students need expectations and guidelines, but also the parents needed to know that there, there was a specific time that we would do our Google Meets, and this is what I expected the students to be ready with. So they needed to have a marker, a piece of paper, uh, a whiteboard. Um, they needed to be sitting down so that I could see their faces so that they could all respond to me. And once the students and the parents both understood what the expectations were, which took a few tries, because I did have one student come in his pajamas to an early morning class, and it was just a pajama top, not a pajama bottom. So <laughs> it did help. And then it was a lot more smoother sailing along the lines. You're, you're making me think, Eileen and Carl, that someone needs to make a video, blooper video, of all the funny mishaps that can happen and use that. I'm on it. You don't want that. Yeah. You're on it? I'm ready. I'm, I've already started the script. Thank you. Yeah. No, I'm, even right. thinking, I'm also thinking, as you guys were saying, Lisa, I mean, you're talking about the simple language. I love that approach. So maybe even it's just an icon, especially for the little kids so that they, when they see that icon or the Zoom or whatever, or Google Meet, they know that's a, that's a, re and you, and like Eileen was saying, you coach them the first couple of weeks. Right. Maybe that's all it is. And so, oh, this means I'm on film versus like, I'm just watching a recording of my teacher talking, which maybe is a different icon. So maybe something, some I iconography might help. That's great. Yeah. It's I'm, like being I'm in a regular... Gonna... I would say it's being like in a regular classroom where you're modeling, like you're modeling the expectations, you're modeling how to get online. It's now we're just telling you to make sure you have on a clothes. <laughs> Absolutely. I do need to be reminded of that. Thank you so much, Jackie. <laughs> we also it. have, we have another participant. Video, okay. I was just going to say, when you do the video, we will share far and wide because I know that's something that is desperately needed. And Laura, who wants to Absolutely. Talk? We got we to gotta get that video out. No, I just, I see another participant raising their hand. Um, I think it's Jasek. I hope I said that correctly. Jasek. Jasek. From the DOE. Hi, Jasek. Please unmute. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, probably redundant and obvious to us, but I don't think you can overemphasize the idea of, of uh, clarity and, and being specific. When you um, when you actually think through the expectations, um, just like in the classroom, you wouldn't say you know uh, show respect every day. You know you have to be really really specific. Um, 
so like somebody mentioned you know then you have specific rules like when you start when you start you have to have a camera on microphone off like have discrete steps as much as i'm not into a micromanagement i really think that this um very specific steps need to be explained to students and teachers and parents um so i just want to say be specific be very clear uh, as to uh, what needs to happen um, and they will address uh, all sorts of things uh, in terms of, you know, going down the line. Like, you know, the clothes you wear are the clothes you would normally wear when you uh, coming to school. You know, simple as that. You know, you can have a list of items you can wear or you can just say, when you come, when you sit in front of the computer, you are expected to wear the same clothes you would normally wear if you came to school. Mm -hmm. And you have to and, really be specific about it. Other than just say, wear respectful clothing, you know, pay attention. Like what does right. it mean to pay attention? You really have to be specific. Um, and Carl's video is going to help us with that. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a great <laughs> idea. The blooper. <laughs> yeah. I, I think so, Yastik, what you're saying and thinking about what Eileen was saying to, you know, let's be simple, let's be clear. And then let's remember that in the beginning of the school year, I, I always used to say like the first month is all like routines and expectations, right? So we can't expect that like we're going to have one conversation about this and then be done, right? Like we had the one talk, we set our norms. And now we're good to go for the rest of the year. That's not how it works, right? We're going to need to kind of train again. And we're going to, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, come September, we can really do this work better. So, you know, having the supports, having a good curriculum, like what we're going to show you and uh, toward the end with our resources, but knowing that you're going to have to take time. And then you revisit these conversations and you revisit this work as needed. This is not a one and done. So um, we put together this fun activity for all of you and it's called, where do you stand? And um, like the best thing that could happen is that some of us change our minds and develop our thinking uh, even more. So we have several questions. We expect to get through two or three, maybe four, but not all of them. Um, so let's uh, have Jackie lead us through the first question. So what I'm gonna ask you to do um, is either in a new browser, on your phone, however you want to respond, head on over to pollev.com backslash Jackie Catanio, which is on your screen. Um, what we're going to do is have you respond on Poll Everywhere, which is one of the tools that we like to use. This is a dropping of the pin on, a, on an image. So I uploaded the images and you're just gonna drop a pin in response to the questions that'll appear on the screen. Um, so either you're going to strongly disagree over on one side or you're going to strongly agree on the other side or fall somewhere in the middle, wherever it is. Um, just when you log in or when you go to the link, uh, be sure to put your name in or your initials and then just stay on that screen because I will be advancing the slides. So um, as we go through, uh, I will be moving them through and you will see them pop up. Okay. Uh, just and also be open, you know, be open to the discussion, be open to challenge a viewpoint or share your viewpoint and be respectful. We just want you to kind of have these conversations with each other. All right, so I'm gonna minimize this and head over to where do you stand? All right, so uh, just let me know if you're able to see the first question on your, on your screens. Lisa, Laura, we good? Yeah, we're good. All right. You can see we have people popping up already. This is interesting as it happens in real time. Right. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's clustering over towards strongly disagree. And remember, there's no right or wrong answers. We're definitely, um, we want to hear from you why you, you know, think what you think and where you're kind of dropping your pin. But if you don't feel intimidated, if you want to kind of put your pin toward the agree side, you are welcome to do that and we can have that discussion. So I just want to respond to Carl's point. I was typing, but I'll um, 
talk. So this, <laughs> we mean live video instruction um, because it would be problematic if teachers were not comfortable with live face-to-face -face instruction. Um, however, the flip on that and a, another conversation we've had is how comfortable, or if you're not comfortable being on camera during live face-to-face -face instruction, should you not have to do it? So that could be a version of that. And that's a big uh, conversation that's happening right now as we're talking about perhaps some of your students are face-to-face -face and some of your students might be virtual when the school year begins. So yes, <laughs> thank you for bringing that up, Carl. Um, so we have mostly people towards strongly disagree, but also people not all the way towards strongly disagree. So I'm just wondering if some of those who are more toward the middle can share their feelings um, and then uh, someone who strongly disagrees can go ahead and raise their hand to share what they're thinking. We're going to do the teacher pause. <laughs> and if you're having problems raising your virtual hand, you could raise your um, you could raise your raise hand. your real hand. Your real hand. Yeah, I forgot what it's called. Your physical hand. <laughs> And just like sharing why you feel that way. And if nobody's feeling like sharing yet, we could model how this goes uh, with Laura, Jackie, or I sharing to start. So um, do either of you want to go first? And if not, I'll, I'll be happy to start. I'll start. That's cool. I, I'm with, so Teachers who are not comfortable with live instruction shouldn't have to do it. I'm going to go with strongly, I'm almost at the end of a strongly disagree. I, I feel like you have to. Like, and it, maybe it's because I have a child who is being, well, just finished kindergarten and is going into first grade, but he needed to have live instruction. Like, I wanted him to see his teacher and I wanted her to teach kindergarten because I am not very good at it. So. <laughs> So, you know, it was fine following what I had to follow when live instruction wasn't available, but I really think that it's something that he needs. And I think that, you know, this is not going away. So it's something that we have to eventually get comfortable with and teachers, administrators have to get comfortable with the idea of being live at some point. And there's some really um, good comments in the chat. So I just do want to point that out. And and I'll just go from, you know, in my heart, I feel extreme to strongly disagree, but in my uh, head, I guess, I think that, you know, if we haven't prepared teachers for this, if we haven't taught them how to teach digital citizenship, then it, it is a bit unfair for us to expect them to do that right out of the gate. But we certainly have to spend some time helping teachers feel comfortable because um, we don't know how long we're going to be remote. And even if we go back face to face, we might be remote again. And in uh, more and more cities across the nation and probably the world, they are now considering starting virtual schools in places where they never had them. So this is something that we really want to help our teachers become comfortable doing. So that's, that's one argument for not going all the way to what I feel in my heart. I'm just wondering if any, oh, yes, Yasek has his hand raised. So Yasek, why don't you? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I agree with you 100%. I just, I would just like to propose that, um, that we show uh, maximal focus on, you know, making sure we are moving to that uh, modality, at least making sure everybody is capable of doing it because this is the work that we need to do. At the same time, I agree with you 200% that we need to, uh, really support teachers. I really believe that those two things are not really um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, um, but we can't back down. Uh, so like, for example, like it might be somebody's not comfortable to go in and do a 45 minute lesson. It would probably be a terrible lesson anyway, 45 minutes, you know, um, <laughs> on camera, but you know, somebody who feels uncomfortable, they might start just by, you know, providing simple short message live and then continue and then gradually build it. But I think 
not doing it is definitely non-negotiable. Um, uh, so yeah, I, 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 you know, I have all empathy for everybody. Um, and by, by, you know, we want kids to be put in kind of uncomfortable situations. We want to push them and challenge them. And I think that applies to uh, teachers and leaders. All of us relate to that and all of us should be um, empathetic uh, to others. But I, th I don't think there's going back. Um, and I have a question, Yasik. Are you still a school administrator? Yes, I'm an assistant principal. Um, so how did you help your teachers become more comfortable with live instruction? Well, it was basically as differentiated as working with students, you know, providing people with professional development and, and you know, doing one-on-one, -on -one, uh, being basically available, which is something that I've done even before we went into remote uh, teaching, just like letting them know if you're struggling with something, text me, I'll be there. Like if you're struggling with something on your computer, when you're locked in, you know, find me and I'll be there to resolve the issue. And, and, and always building in, I started, what, what I started doing now um, a lot more is like modeling. Like, so if I come in and help somebody, I would actually go out of my way to kind of um, like show my thinking or my learning and my, my challenge. Um, so everything became uh, about modeling to teachers how to overcome difficulties and praising them for when they, when they, you know, uh, rather than just running for help, just try, you know, try and also making them feel like they're not going to break anything. Like if you log into Google Classroom, you're really not going to mess up anything. Even if you mess it up, I'll fix it. Sometimes I'll fix it. You don't even know you messed it up because it's not, you know, it's not about, um, it's about learning. So just emphasizing the learning aspect of it. But at the same time, being really, uh, I don't want to say forceful, but being really zeroed in on the fact that we're not going back. There are forces that want to, want to pull us back, or mindsets, I would say. Uh, but, you know, just keeping us from there, like moving forward, like not doing it is not an option. It's just right. not. And I think you bring up a really good point. And I think as administrators, you want to model bringing your teachers together. And while you do that in a video conference, sharing some of the things that they might be doing with their students so that they see it directly from you. So thank you Absolutely. for sharing that. Um, well, one of my favorite things, I'm going to be quiet after this, is finding somebody who is originally you know, resistant or a concern. I like to prefer to see it as concern. So if they are overly resistant and concerned about something and having them model and show, you see, I was afraid to do this and I did that, it was tough, but I overcame this. I think these are the, both, the best ways for us leaders to kind of um, move the work is by teachers who are originally resistant and then overcome whatever the resistance. Right. And, and I, we heard some great things. We had people, you know, opening up and saying, oh my God, this is so, this is so terrible, but now I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's working. Um, yeah. It's working. And I think it, it's great to have them like share some of the great things that work when you do bring them together in a video conference. So thank you Absolutely. so much for sharing those insights. And, um, and then Carl, uh, you have your hand up and you want to share something. So we'll hear from Carl on this topic. Other people can put things in the chat and we'll move to the next question. Yeah, and I'll kind of, and I, and I want to agree with a lot of what Yasik said. I mean, I do think modeling is important. Finding that outspoken teacher that is somewhat reticent to change or do something differently and getting them to be the one that do it is a very important thing. Um, I'll just add a couple things and I'm seeing this in the chat too. And that is building those relationships is so important, especially when you think about what we ended with. We ended with several months of relationship building and then we went virtual. Now we're starting virtual. So how do we build those relationships? And I think there has to be some expectation. And like Yasik said, maybe it's just a minimum expectation. Like here's the, here's the idea guys, 15 minutes, I want you to check in with your students every day uh, in real time. And the rest of it can be asynchronous. So I think even just doing that builds some sort of small relationship. And then my last thing is, as a district, if you're requiring this, I would just encourage you to make sure that you're supporting your teachers, whether it be with internet or whether it be with a device, because doing this on a very small device is gonna be hard when you're doing video chat and multiple tabs and kind of the things that we are used to doing. Um, so thinking about that as a district out there, make sure you're supporting your staff too, because some of them may not have the internet or the bandwidth to do a lot of this too. So how do we support them? Those are fantastic points, thank you. Um, so Jackie, I'll let, us, let you move us to our next question. 
Here we are. It's reasonable for students to face consequences later in life for social media posts or online comments they share today. I don't know if I activated this, so hold on one sec. No, it is active. And I'll drop the, um, the link in the chat one more time in case anyone lost it. Hmm, lots of people in the middle. So if you're already wanting to kind of share your thinking, you can go ahead and pop it in the chat. Um, but it looks like we've got a decent amount of responses. So if there's also someone that wants to unmute themselves, you can go ahead and raise your hand. And definitely not to volunteer and told anybody, but we do sort of like to have somebody on closer to the strongly disagree, somebody who is in the strongly agree, and then sort of that middle area. Not that I'm going to bully anybody into this, only if you want to speak. <laughs> this is also one of those very interesting questions where when we've done this training before, we usually get folks kind of across the spectrum. Um, and this, we see this situation happen, uh, or at least we've seen it happen a number of times with so many different students, whether they be our own or just something that gets reported nationally. So this is always an interesting one to kind of hear what folks think. So Jay put something in the chat and it's something that I, I often think about in regards to this question. Um, where do you draw the line between childish comment and something to be punished for? So there's that thought, like, is it being childish? What is the age of the supposed, you know, student? Like, what is like a 13 year old versus a 17 year old versus it, you know, and like those type of things for me come into play when thinking about this question. So I tend to, you know, I go from strongly disagree to the middle to strongly agree, depending on the situation. I, I feel the same way. And as a former elementary educator, you know, a, a lot of my older students, and I'm talking like fourth and fifth grade, a lot of them were already dabbling with social media, which, you know, is a little problematic because some of them are literally nine and 10 years old. However, you know, should a nine and 10 year old, because they're not fully thinking through their actions, because they're not on a platform that's really designed for them, should they have to pay dearly for it for the rest of their life, right? Um, and again, I, I, I'm with Jackie, I kind of go back and forth and I have always kind of felt it, it's a little situational, right? It depends on kind of what they do on social media. How far do they go? Um, you know, a, a, a racist or a bigoted comment, you know, that's pretty serious. And we've had instances of that. And that is not the same as just making an inappropriate joke, right? So I think age matters. I think the situation matters, the context. Um, there's a lot of factors at play. This is not, I don't think this is a dry, you know, black and white type of issue. I think it's its very situational. And those are some of the points that are being brought up in the chat, exactly what you're saying. It's the age and it's the content. Is it, I believe I just saw, is it eating Tide Pods versus racist comments? Not that eating Tide Pods is a good thing. I, you know, <laughs> but, you know you're thinking about the level of what's being shared. Absolutely. It, it all matters. And, you know, this is why we can't stress it enough. Having those conversations about this uh, with your students, really following through with a digital citizenship curriculum from the time that they're in kindergarten, right? Um, this is what will help them. If you're talking about this stuff and you're talking about the importance of your digital footprint, why you need to think about what you say and do and post on the internet from an early age, then your students are going to be more equipped and they're not going to have these issues, right? Um, 
or they may not have them to the extent that, you know, we've seen reported in the news, right? Because we always, we've seen those stories every so often and they're so cringeworthy. And those are instances where I'm like, if only they had gotten that message sooner, right? Um, okay, so I think, thank you for sharing that. Um, so just giving everyone a time check, we have about five minutes left. I, we're gonna do one more question, and then I also want you to know that after we do this question, we have a whole bunch of resources in the presentation and on the agenda where you can find curriculum to use with your students. Um, K to 12, we have a variety of options and choices, so do go back to our agenda and presentation to make sure you take a look at that because there are ways to support you. So we'll do our last question. And Jackie has placed that up on the screen. And it says, um, what people say or do in public spaces. And now I'm going to let Laura finish because my, <laughs> face, my face is over and I can't get it off. <laughs> no worries. So what people do or say in public spaces is there for others to record and post on social media. Thanks. So you. another another one of those tougher questions, right? And and we purposely have designed these questions to kind of be very open ended. Um, we want to see the variety of opinions again, not forcing you to go any way on the spectrum, um, but. I think, you know, depending on kind of your uh, philosophy and ideology on things, this is one that is also could run the gamut. So feel free to kind of think about where you stand. And as we have done before, um, please, uh, if you want to share kind of why you've put your pin on the spectrum, where you put it on, open up the chat. And if you want to uh, unmute yourself, just raise your hand, but we'd love to hear from folks on this last one. When I see a lot of folks clustered in the middle, it always makes me think the middle's kind of because you're, you're like, well, it depends. It could go this way <laughs> in one, in one situation, but I could be strongly agree on the other one, right? It's like the student one. It's like depending on the age, depending on the scenario, what defines public space? I was in a public bathroom, you know, yeah. is that what you recorded me? So. And I think with this one too, uh, I think it's also the intention. When we've done this question before, I always think about the intention, right? So if I'm going to post um, you know, a video or a picture that was taken while I was in public, what is my intention in sharing that? Is it because I want people to, you know, see what I was seeing, right? And kind of, if, if I'm at a protest rally or I want, you know, to share an image that I took in public because I want to inform others, that's very different than I'm purposely sharing a video or an image that's designed to embarrass the person in that image or video, right? So the intention behind why you're sharing, I think is also key. And um, Carl brings up a good point, which is that he said he used to be more in the middle, but now he's more that he strongly agrees because if you're respectful in public, you won't have any issues. But if you act a fool and someone records you, you don't know what will happen. And that brings up the point, I don't know if this is true across uh, all school districts, but in New York City, teachers are supposed to be role models, even in public, even when they're not at work. So you, you really want to try to have that behavior as much as possible. However, when we're talking about students, it's a little bit of a different story. Um, and I think it's such an important thing to teach in digital citizenship, like um, asking permission to tag someone or share something before you post it in social uh, media. Mm -hmm. So those are important concepts. And we're also seeing this this very scenario play out um, right now, right? I mean, how many times have we gone on social media and people are posting their videos of like Karens, right? That that so to speak person who's refusing to comply with like say mask wearing or who's you know doing something in public that is cringeworthy, right? And 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 it's it's these videos have been used to take away jobs to really highlight you know the inequity of the situation and what's happening. Um, 
we're seeing this play out. And as Carl's saying, kind of like, if that's what you're going to do in public, then isn't it fair game to then post it, right? Because in theory, anybody could walk by and see what you're doing. So how is it different if I share it on social media or on the internet? Okay, so uh, we're gonna wrap with that. However, I just want you to see that we have some really great curriculum resources for you. Several of them are at no cost. Um, and if you could skip to the next slide, Jackie. Um, and we want to just thank all of you. Here are our Twitter handles if you want to keep the conversation going. It is going to be 15 minutes before our next session. So we definitely will follow the chat and respond to anything that we see there. And we really appreciate you taking time from your day and having this, these interesting conversations with us. And Laura and Jackie, if you wanna say anything, please go ahead. Uh, again, just to echo Lisa, thank you guys. This has been uh, a pleasure to be part of. I love the conversations that were happening in the chat today. And hopefully, um, you know, we continue to have these conversations with each other as educators, but also in this upcoming school year with our students and with their families, right? We have to be talking about this work. It is how we can do better. Just echoing um, Lisa and Laura's sentiments. Thank you so much, everyone. Looking forward to connecting with you and keeping the conversation going. Uh, and I'm just gonna add one more thing uh, based on something that Victoria wrote in the chat, but we do make our presentation in a way that you can copy it and modify it and use it back where you work. So please, uh, you are invited to do so with the presentation or the agenda. So thank you very much. We love to share and spread uh, ideas as far and wide as possible. Thank you. Great, thanks everyone. So I wanna remind uh, everyone that we are getting all of these resources up into the resource section of the conference hub. So this deck along with the resources that were uh, linked in this presentation, we'll get those up um, probably in about an hour. Um, there's obviously a lot of presentations going on today, so we're trying to get everything up. Um, again, thank you to our sponsors, Guide, Guide K-12, now Forecast 5 Analytics, Media Site, Prezi, Nereva, and our brand new sponsor, uh, Boxlight, who just came on today. So uh, the hub is open. You can visit those uh, sponsor booths now. Again, if you Zoom chat with any of the sponsors, you get 20 uh, entries into the Passport Surprises, and we'll be pulling those winners tomorrow. Uh, the site uh, will be actually up for a full year, so you'll be able to access all those resources. Unfortunately, we will not have live chat <laughs> enabled with our sponsors for a full year, but you can um, visit those booths. Uh, over the next two days. Um, so we will see you all tomorrow. This concludes the sessions for today. Uh, tomorrow's sessions uh, start at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern. So we will see you there. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.